Hi guys, Yuki here, back with Seduce Me 2, The Demon War, Part 4, Sam's Route. And we are going to see if we can actually find Sam and get the good end, even though I don't know how far away that is. You, spider. <laughs> how far, uh, that's, how, lo how long that's going to take. Sorry, I got distracted. I nodded and felt a wave of hope and courage rush through my body. I was ready now. I focused on the ring, trying to will it to give me a sign, a hint, anything to help me find Sam. As I stared into it, a word popped into my mind. Letting it loose, I could feel magic pulse into the air from around my body. I'm Ward. Oh, that's cute! That's so cute! My hand suddenly became wrapped in green chain-shaped markings, sprouting from the base of my ring before jutting off of my skin and flying forward through the air and deeper into the forest. I felt myself grin from ear to ear. I was going to find him. I quickly burst into a sprint, following the ethereal chain that was leading me towards Sam, and caring of the harsh breaths I was taking or the pain that shot through my legs. I needed to keep going forward. All that mattered was that I had to keep moving forward. The chain twisted and turned around trees and often arced around obstacles for me, guiding me perfectly towards a thicker brush of woods. The amount of bushes and smaller trees began to grow the farther I went in, but I continued. Soon enough, I found myself walking towards the descending mouth of a cave where a familiar brown-haired demon boy lay face down at its edge. Sam! I ran forward and slid into my knees, lifting his head into my lap. Around his neck was a golden collar which, upon my touch, vanished and caused Sam to stir from his comatose state. Dang, somebody really did chain up the monster. <sighs> what? <laughs> Not really. My heart began to swell as I stared down at him, tears welling up in my eyes. This was really him. He was safe here in my arms and I had found him. His emerald gaze wore into mine, still dazed from the sleep he was in. As he stared at me, Sam lifted his hand and caressed my cheek, causing me to unconsciously nuzzle into it. There you are. <laughs> Boy, you're just going to let me kiss you. I couldn't help but repeat the first words he had ever said to me. Oh! Oh! Aww. I should have said it with more passion, but it doesn't matter. They had engraved themselves into my mind and I was forever thankful for that. Sam's lips curved into a smug smile, remembering the phrase perfectly. Then hurry up and do it. <laughs> I grinned and bent down, capturing his lips with my own. My entire body felt complete as our lips touched. I didn't care if he took energy from me, me in it. I had found him. Well done. To our surprise, the voice didn't ring in our heads. The voice of the dragon echoed from the cave, causing me and Sam to separate and stare into the void. You have proven to me the strength of your heart. Now, for the final test, Sam must prove his. Oh no. I instinctively gripped Sam tighter. We weren't going to be separated again, we were we? Sam Hover slowly stood up, guiding me with him and glared into the darkness. Hit me with your best shot. I'm ready. A dark, echoing chuckle reverberated from the cat cave, causing a sliver of fear to rush down my body. I was beyond nervous, but we had, to c we had come this far. We were going to win his powers. Step into the cave. Ah. And face me. I will judge you. The memories of my nightmare began to fill my head. What if it was a trick? What if that dragon killed Sam while he was in there? Despite my fraining thoughts, Sam tor stepped towards the cave, nodding. You got it. Every voice and nerve in my head screamed for me to stop him. I didn't want him to die. At the same time, this was a test. He had to do it. I was placing my heart on the table and hoping it wouldn't be ripped apart with a single blast. Um, let him do it. 
I'm not going to stop him. I had to trust him. He could do this. I watched as Sam walked into the cave, falling behind until he vanished into the darkness. I stood once again between the light and the dark, waiting. Waiting. Moments of silence ran by, filling my body with anxiousness. Was he safe? Was he okay? At the sudden shout of a dragon roar, I jumped and gripped the cave wall, frightened to the core. It echoed into the silence of out of the mouth of the cave, but I became worried. What happened? What was going on? The faint echo of footsteps began to make their way towards me, despite me not being able to see it into the dark. I hoped it was Sam. I prayed it was Sam and Scape. <gasps> Is he possessed? As Sam finally appeared out of the darkness, I gasped, not at seeing him at last, but when I saw his eyes. They were swirling with red and green flames along the whites of his eyes, while his emerald irises glowed in the shadows of the cave. Just from seeing him, I could tell he had changed and he had become much more powerful. Sam? Sam grinned at me, stepping up in front of me and placing a hand on my head. Sup, you doofus. Okay, good. It's, he's okay, I hope. I bit my lip and shook my head, pounding a fist into his chest before hugging him to me tightly. Whoa! Hey, it's alright. I'm right here. Thank God you are. May your battle be won, Lord of Dragons. I looked over Sam's shoulder into the darkness, seeing the faint outline of a large dragon's head fade away before my eyes. What the? Lord of Dragons? Before Sam could answer me, a light burst into the air, causing us to grip onto each other and shut our eyes. The warmth of the light seemed to comfort and ease our travel to wherever the dragon was sending us. Regardless, I clung to Sam tightly, desperate not to let go of him. When we opened our eyes at last, we were in the war room in the middle of the space with the rebel leaders, the incubi and their wives staring wide-eyed at us. Before anyone could move, however, Diana plotted at us, making everyone turn their head towards her in confusion. Well done, you two. Yay! Wait, you knew where they were all along? She told us they were gone. She didn't say she didn't know where. Listen, that's rude. <laughs> at least they're safe now. James, however, took a step towards Sam, peering at him. Sam's eyes had returned to normal, but I bet that his aura was different now that he was the Lord of the Dragons, or whatever the dragon had called him. At least you're safe now. You were worried about him too, dude. Ah, Group hug. Don't ruin it. He has a reputation. <laughs> He's much stronger than before now. Sam gave James a smug look before holding out his hand. Yeah, I'm alright now. Two brothers shook hands, smiling at one another. I was happy to know that he was alright as well, giving him a squeeze. Diana, who cleared her throat as the rebel leaders took off, catching everyone's attention. Well, I hate to break up this little reunion, but we have a battle to fight tomorrow. We should rest. Wait, how long are we gone for? Everyone was in agreement, especially my aching body. The run in the forest was not a kind one. As everyone began to leave, however, Diana called out. Sam, a moment please. Alone. No. I was worried about what Diana wanted to speak to Sam about, but I left the room with the rest of the group regardless. Diana seemed adamant. However, I remained at the door, listening in. So, you got me alone. What do you want? I peeked into the room to see Diana face away from Sam, who had his arms crossed as she was waiting for her to as he was waiting for her to speak. Tomorrow is the day we head out to fight him. We've been fighting for ten years, and it will finally end. You're stalling. What is it? Do you know how many lives have been lost because of this war? Sam finally lowered his arms and glared back at Diana's head. I glared as well. What was she bringing this up? From her tone, however, tone of voice, however, she seriously wanted an answer. Hundreds? Thousands? Nine and a half million lives. 
What? Sam's breath hitched in shock, as did mine. That many lives had been lost? Was this war truly as bloody as rebel leaders described it to be? Diana turned her head and stared into Sam's shocked gaze. I had to send off and watch almost nine and a half million soldiers marching to their deaths. This world lost that many lives and had to take their blood and ashes into its soil as the battles we fought ended. The Demon Lord, however, ravaged and slaughtered thousands of innocent lives in between, sending more people to their deaths just because they were in his way. Why are you telling me this? All of those lives could have been spared. Oh my god. Diana turned around and glared hard at Sam, and to my surprise, Sam froze in place. Every single life that was lost during this war could have lived, could have been leading normal lives. Hmph. <laughs> Sam didn't open his mouth. Why was he, wasn't he saying anything? I felt the need to step in, but I was stopped by a hand over my- Gosh dang it, Sarah! My mouth. Shh! Oh, Damien. That's new. I looked up to see Damien covering my mouth and staring into the room intently. I didn't understand. Why was he hushing me? I looked back into the room as Diana began to step towards Sam. My kingdom became the target of the Demon Lord's wrath, and I came back to the castle and my people screaming to the sky and burning in the flames. My family was taken away from me, and there is nothing I can do to bring them back. As Diana finally got close to Sam, leaning nose to nose with him, her eyes began to glow a cruel, cold, golden color, making me worry. And it's all because of you, your brothers, and that human. What? <clears throat> like lightning, Diana and Sam slammed into the and Sam slammed into the far wall. However, instead of a Diana against the wall, Sam was held against it with Diana's hand over his mouth. What surprised me the most was Sam staring at Diana with an almost shocked and fearful expression. What the hell? Sam gripped Diana's arm, but for some reason she didn't seem to be affected by his strength. Like he was gripping stone. Where did her strength come from? I want to get it through your head that this war is your fault. Yours and that human's fault. My parents, my sister, their lives were ripped away from this world because of you two. My kingdom burned, drowned in the flames of the Demon Lord because of you two. Is this another test? Your brothers were too enthralled with the human world to give a damn about where they came from, so I could have never convinced them to come back. You were my only hope, and you decided that the human was more important than the peace of this world. Because of your love for her, you stayed in the human world and caused so much death. No! No, I don't want to make this decision! I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to not keep watching. I want to burn that anger into your soul. Every single life that has been lost in this war to stop the Demon Lord was because of you and your love. Diana's hand slowly moved from Sam's mouth to his collar and gripped it, pulling him up onto his toes. However, as they continued to stare at each other, Sam's eyes began to glow a bright red and gold color, the mixture swirling in his green irises. This war wasn't. Yes, it was! Diana quickly pulled Sam forward and slammed him back into the wall, causing him to jerk and wince, growling but continued to stare at Diana's angry expression. Around Diana's body was a dark purple aura, flickering like a wildfire with her screams. If I had just killed that human and dragged you back, the world would not be suffering as it is! If that human wasn't alive, then the Demon Lord would not have done what he did! If you and your brothers had just stayed, this war would not have happened! We're gonna end it! We will! And when this war is over, I will never have to see you or that damn human ever again! I stared wide at as Diana lowered her head down and slightly loosened her grip on Sam's collar. Her back was arced over, twitching and spasming as Diana gritted her teeth. That is why! 
You too must survive. So confused. <sighs> what? Diana's voice weakened immensely, drenched in soft and choked sobs and whimpers. You two need to survive this war. You need to protect her. And stay alive, no matter what. My heart dropped, but my mind was lost. Where was this coming from? I felt Damien loosen his grip over my mouth slightly as I watched Sam straighten up and look down at Diana. This aura around Diana slowly began to die out with each word Diana choked out. If either of you die... Then this war will have happened for nothing. All of those lives. All of this destruction. The only reason we are here is because of you two. Diana. Diana looked up to Sam, a new hopeless pain burning into her eyes as tears began to stream down her face. Swear to me, brute, that you will take responsibility for this and live no matter what happens damn the war damn my life but you must swear that you understand and will take this responsibility my heart was hurting at the sight of diana she looked so broken barely gripping the salmon no longer forcing him against the wall behind him sam however pressed his lips together what is he going to do? Sam, staring at Diana's expression, slowly grabbed onto both of Diana's horns and pressed and pulled Diana's head downward, pressing his forehead to the top of her head. I swear. Okay. For the first time and only time in my life, I watched Diana crumple to the ground onto her knees with Sam following her down. Diana's hands released Sam and covered her face before he started sobbing violently into her palms. Sam kept his hands on her horns, pressing his forehead into the top of her head with closed eyes. Red energy from Diana's body slowly began to slide along her form and into Sam's head, slowly wrapping around him and fading away. It, is he cleansing her of the dark thoughts that plague her? I don't know. I stepped away from the door and looked at Damien, seeing him look down to the ground in shame. Damien... It is our fault, but we can't change the past. We can only end this. I nodded, feeling the weight of the word world rest on my soul. In a way, I felt completely responsible for this war even happening. I loved Sam enough to keep him away from his duty, his reason for birth. I chained him to me and I wouldn't let him go. I looked back to Diana, seeing her shaking and crying as Sam continued to remain still holding her horns. The energy had vanished and all that was left were the tears Diana was shedding. Did Sam take her energy? Sam took away her rage. Okay, that's what I thought. Wait. What? I looked up at Damien, confused. He was an incubus, so why he was only able to take away sexual energy, right? He could take other forms of energy too? Sam can do that? Yes, actually. While he's an incubus, he's also part brute demon. Just like the rest of us. Oh, yeah. Too bad we didn't learn this from Sergeant. I was surprised. Sam was part dr brute demon? So were the boys? Damien chuckled softly, assuming because he read my mind and nodded. Our mothers were succubi. The demon lord, though, he's no incubus. He's a brute demon who feeds on and uses rage energy. Damien looked into the room, losing part of his smile. Sam, our brothers and I, were born incubi, but Sam inherited more brute demon traits than the rest of us. Thus, why he had the nicknames Brute and Monster. Oh. Because he wasn't like a regular incubus? Damien nodded. I looked to Sam, seeing him stare into Diana's scalp with a focused but intense expression. The more I thought about it, the more I could see what he meant. Sam never got into the idea of taking and using sexual energy. 
He was angry all of the time in the demon world, so he fed on rage energy instead. It wasn't until he went to the human world with us when he began to rely on his incubus powers. Oh. I could only imagine it. Sam, who hated his father and was a rebel son of the Incubi brothers, full of anger. That was probably why he was so forward when he had met. We had met and full of attitude. Still, I fell in love with him. He was a truly a wonderful man. He did everything he could to make me happy and feel safe. He always put me first, which flattered me and made me feel incredibly special. I didn't know what to say to that. Diana eventually stopped crying and wiped the tears from her face, but she didn't raise her head. Damien, whom I thought had, would have stayed longer, disappeared, leaving me alone to watch. Sam, if I die, would you? Huh? What? Would he what? I stared, hoping that Diana would reply with a clearer question, but she merely closed her eyes and let out a small sigh. Suddenly, the noise in the room became silent, but I could see Diana's lips move. Sam's eyes widened as she, spin as she finished speaking, but he didn't say anything back, even as Diana looked up at Sam. When Sam finally reacted, he let out a silent sigh and spoke back. The sound of his voice negated through whatever silence engulfed the room. As my body began to collapse, I watched as Diana listened and nodded with a smile before fading into the ground and through a dark pentagram. Sam Hull remained there, staring where Diana had been, and took in whatever she had said. Upon the demand of my body, I began to make my way towards the bedroom, not wanting Sam to know what I had, that, I have been, that I had been eavesdropping. I began to make my way back to my room, but stopped as I heard the sound of whispered voices sneak out through a barely open door. So, we're all in agreement? This again? You already know my answer. We have to. We don't have any choice anymore. It will be for the better, I'm sure. Indeed. I peeked into the room to see the interior of the library where the four rebel leaders stood in a circle. Sergeant leaned against the fireplace mantel while Rabbit and Shadow sat in two empty chairs. Fahor floated to and from from side to side in anxiousness. What were they talking about? I was so engrossed in figuring out what happened in the room that I didn't notice a figure come up behind me and push me into the room. Yeah! Commander! A spy! Oh, come on, Dantler. Huh? Human? I grimaced, now out in the open. The four stared at me with cold eyes as they were ready to send me back to the human world as a corpse rather than going through with the siege. I looked at all of them as I slowly rose to my feet, eyeing each leader and I considered running for the door. However, they each looked to each other in contemplation. Say, um, you didn't hear anything, did you? No, I swear! What was the last thing you heard? Something about it being for the better. I suddenly felt the guards of each leader behind me readying their weapons. What the hell, what were they seriously going to kill me for walking by and eavesdropping? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on, guys! I felt the guards back away from me slowly, most likely still cautious of me. I let out a small sigh, happy that I wasn't going to die. At least not immediately. Rabbit, however, looked to me with an ear twitching in curiosity. Let us ask first. Do you know what has been truly happening with Diana? I looked to Rabbit, knowing what she meant. Diana had been acting oddly, and it was not boding well. The more I saw her, I could tell that something was seriously weighing her down or influencing her words. Yeah, but what does this have to do with this meeting? As I answered, the other demons looked once again to each other before Shadow stepped forward nonchalantly. Let's not play the ignorance game. We're going to assassinate the succubus when the war is over. No! What? Oh, what the fuck? Way to just blurt it out! There's no use in hiding it. We don't know how much she has heard. I became massively confused. But were they going to kill her? How were they even going to do it? Why? What good would come of killing her? Rabbit stood and walked to the fireplace, staring into the open flames. I could tell I was about to get an answer, so I listened intently, wanting to know why they were planning Diana's murder. Diana, we fear, has become corrupted. 
corrupted? What do you mean? Meaning, she's going batshit crazy like the Demon Lord! I furrowed my eyebrows. That couldn't be. She seemed mostly fine, save for a few instances here and there. Sergeant, reading my face, pushed himself off the mantle and stood up straight, reminding me of how his power with his stance. Human, you hate the Demon Lord as much as we do, correct? I glared at Sergeant's stupid question. Of course I hated him. He had trapped me here and forced me and the ones I loved to join this war. There was no reason to even remotely like him. At my glare, Faye stooped in between me and Sergeant, waving her arms, I mean, their arms, frantically. Listen, we're not trying to make you mad, but, well... This is ridiculous. Shadow stood from his seat, now clearly irritated, and stepped towards me. The succubus has gone mad, and if we don't end her life before she takes the throne, then she will become as mad as the Demon Lord. There is no saving her. Understand? Oh, come on, Shadow! Seriously? No, this is beyond unnecessary. All three of you are complicating the matter when all that needs to be stated is the truth. But how can that be? How is Diana mad like the Demon Lord? None of this made sense. Diana seemed mostly right in her head, however, she was strong enough to lead an army and help me them help me survive until now. She even aided the Incubi. These weren't the actions of a mad woman. Shadow rolled his eyes and went back to his seat as Fave put their hands behind their backs, swaying a bit in the air. Well, here's the thing. Here in the demon world, emotions and stuff can be uber powerful. Things like extreme grief or euphoria can even become energies on their own, while other feelings become... well... they can become very, very bad things. Like madness? Yeah! Madness is more than just a head-mind thingy. Here in this world, it's like a leech or a virus. When a demon catches it, madness just grows and grows until it consumes them, like it did with the Demon Lord. Taking the new information and I looked to the floor thinking of the Demon Lord and how psychotic he was said to have become. He waged wars and apparently enjoyed burning down kingdoms and slaughtering the innocent. If that was how far madness would take a demon, then I feared for anyone who was capable of falling into it. You can become mad in multiple ways. By being born mad, or being infected by it. Diana has fought the Demon Lord Head on multiple times during the past ten years. It was inevitable that she would catch the affliction. You can catch madness? How is that possible? We don't know, but this wouldn't be the first time someone who used to be sane went mad because they were around another crazy demon. There was an uneasiness in the room. Something told me that none of them believed that this was the true cause. There's more, isn't there? Huh? I became bold. If Diana had to die, there had to be a solid reason and the madness excuse wasn't enough. Why were they planning it if none of them truly believed it? It's not just about because she's mad, isn't it? Something else is wrong. The rebel leaders became silent, letting the tension lay in the air in plain view and giving me my answer. I was right. There's more to the story. That succubus doesn't deserve the throne. Plain and simple. I looked at Sergeant, surprised at his words. As he looked at me, I could see a world of anger behind his eyes. This world needs a real leader on the throne. Not some self-entitled princess who assumes everything is hers just because of her rank in society. Is that what she gives the impression of? You really think that of her? I do. The moment I swore my alliance to this rebellion, I watched her. And I don't like what I see. She's emotional and she has too much power. Nothing about her taking the throne is honorable. That word's death? Don't you get it? If we tell her to step down, then the ones who follow her will force her right back in. She's too powerful to be left alive. I grimaced. Sergeant had his reasons, and obviously they were noble to him, but I didn't understand. Rabbit shook her head, tapped. 
keeping her stuff to the ground. Regardless, we can't have you remembering the conversation we had here if we are set on stopping her. I took a step back, now afraid. Were they really going to kill me? They sensed my fear and waved their hands wildly. Whoa! Hey, hold on! We're not gonna hurt you or anything! That was somewhat of a relief, but what were they going to do? As I took a deep breath, uh, Shadow spoke up, catching my attention. I'm curious, human. Do you believe in the succubus? What? The other rebel leaders looked to Shadow as he placed a hand on his chin in thought and peered into my eyes. Who do you believe should rule this world? The succubus? Or one of us? And suddenly I became the focal point of the entire war's resolution. Why was my opinion important? I looked to the floor, trying to mull over his questions and come up with an answer. Dan had saved my life and was doing something, everything to make sure I could go back to the human world as safely as possible. Still, from how she was behaving, something was indeed seriously off with her. Was she really ready to take the throne? The four rebel demons before me, however, were all smart and balanced each other out in some shape or form. I could tell that they could all bring peace to the world in some way, but did Diana really have to be eliminated for that to happen? I felt like I was standing on a precipice. I knew that if I sided with Diana that she would eventually be eliminated by these four unless she found out beforehand. I could warn her, but what if these demons erase my memories or threaten my flight? I was balancing on the edge of a knife and I had to pick a direction to fall. I closed my eyes and answered Shadow's question. I believe in Diana. Diana had done so much for us, for me, there was no way I could betray her. The four in the room stared at me, taking in my reply. <laughs> What does a human know? Well, we did ask. Enough. We need to continue this another time. For now... Rabbit lowered her staff and pointed the tip at me, causing me to step back in fear. Et ex memoria de hot loco mentem. All at once, I felt my head completely filled with white noise, causing me to grip my head and fall to my knees in pain. I shut my eyes and felt the world spin around me before I relaxed as silence overtook my senses. My body floated for a bit in an empty void before softly landing on the surface, causing me to open my eyes and look around. Huh? What happened? I was in the hallway on the floor. How did I get there? I was on my way to my room. Weird. I stood up, brushed myself off, and looked around, hoping that no one saw me snoozing on the floor. When I noticed that the coast was clear, I continued on my way to my room. I must have been more tired than I thought. I finally reached my room and let my body fall onto the bed. I let out a sigh of utter pleasure as I felt the cloud-like bed cradle my body on its surface. I was beyond happy. I had been kidnapped and taken to the demon world by the demon lord, trapped here unless he or I died. Then Sam and I had haunted a... had been haunted by a powerful being that had been hell-bent on testing us. This entire week had become a wild roller coaster of ride of excitement, and I would have never expected. Still, there was joy to be found in an adventure, and curiosity thank my curiosity thanked destiny for letting me experience it. Now all I wanted to do was to get home and marry the man I loved. As Sam finally entered the room at last, I smiled and stood, walking over and wrapping my arms around him. Hey, you ready to go home? <laughs> More than ready. We stood each we held each other, locked in silence and unable to say anything more. We let the situation we had just gone through sink in, relieved that we were going to be happy from now on together. All we could do in the moment was hold each other and listen to our synchronized heartbeats. As the thought of tomorrow danced in my head, I began to grow fearful. Was I ready to go into battle? With Sam? Were any of us for that matter? We were about to walk into the final clash of a world war. Would we survive? Would I live to remain with Sam and feel his embrace again? Tomorrow brought too many questions to think about and I became frustrated and scared. And... I clicked to Sam. I needed to hold him and treat the night like it was our last. Tomorrow was unpredictable, but tonight was guaranteed. A wave of carnal need rushed through me, needing to indulge all I could tonight. It was stupid to believe that tomorrow could have been our last day alive, but reality scared me. I was scared, and I needed to release that fear in Sam's arms. 
We needed to rock as if the world was ending because we didn't know if it would. I gripped onto Sam's jacket and pulled him close to me, selling my lips onto his and feeling him gasp against my our kiss. He stared wide at me for a moment before gripping to my waist hard and returning my kiss. He was feeling the same. I could feel the tremors of his own concern rumble beneath his fingertips as they gently dragged themselves along my waist and buried themselves under my clothes. I pulled away slightly, panting as I burned my gaze into his eyes. How modest? I don't know. His eyes flashed a gold color at the sign of his true name. I would use it and call it over and over to make him drive me to the blissful night we desperately needed. His grip on me tightened, and I leaned in close nose, repeating it in a husky tone. Okay. How modest. Yeah. A cardinal snarl escaped Sam's lips before he roughly cupped the hand behind my head and pulled me into a hard kiss. Rowling lustfully against my lips as I groaned at the feeling. The gates of our control flung open and we let it all in. It almost became too easy tearing Sam's clothes out of his off of his body. It was definitely easy for him to strip every last article off of my body and take in the sensation of our skin to skin contact. The heat dancing our skin over our skins became almost unbearable as he marched me to bed and pinned me down, biting over my lip before planting nips over my neck and shoulder. I would bear the love bites and hickey as he was painting over my skin with pride. All I cared about was feeling him within my arms and screaming his name as we finally passed at the point of no return. His demon name spurred him on, skyrocketing the passion between us as I let it fall from my lips between my overt cries of pleasure. His fingers clawed over my back as my own gripped his shoulders hard, returning the favor. My name fell from his own lips between his hard and loving kisses over my neck and shoulder. As he finally cleaned my lips to silence us both, we became unhinged and soared through multiple peaks of ecstasy. I could barely remember how many we rushed through, but our emotions were running high, and the beautiful afterglow that awaited us gave us a soft descent into a blissful haze in each other's arms. We both were hurting, aching from the amount of energy we released in our lovemaking, but thankful at the end of that we did. We didn't need, even need to speak as we held each other close and let the night consume us. My heart was filled with Sam and I became solely protective of my love for him. If tomorrow was going to be a test against death, then it was a test I would succeed in. I would not let the demon lord or anyone take Sam away from me again. I love you, Aramaris. Tomorrow would decide everything. The day of the siege had finally dawned. We had arrived at the Demon Lord's castle and we were as ready as we could be. Many armies bearing different banners and colors washed over the grounds before the castle, ready to rush in and lay waste to the Demon Lord and the remainder of his forces. All of us shared a common enemy and upon his demise would all finally know some form of peace. Even during the roll call of the Major Generals, the air came full of determination and pride. Mirth! Avarice! Nadia! Fiorna! Aradum! Each name called became a mark on history. This was a war to bring freedom and destruction to the demon world. If the rebellion didn't win this fight, then this war would never end. If the rebellion won, then the world would become united in a hopefully peaceful rule. The hour before the battle was set to take place, my thoughts instantly ran back to our final meeting in Lilith Castle. Diana had pulled the leaders and us together, instructing us how exactly to proceed. Sano, you will be joining Shadow and Sergeant in the front, taking care of the main army head-on. I expect that you will come out of it alive.
Yes, my lady. Rabbit, Fay, you are in charge of range attacks and defense. We cannot allow any of those blasted imps getting to us from behind. Yes, ma'am! As Diana looked to me, I grew slightly fearful. I had to get into the Demon Lord's castle, but how exactly did Diana plan on getting me there? You and your fiancé will take the side route straight to the castle. Wait, huh? We've organized our army to have our strongest- If anything trickles into the side route, you'll be able to handle it. However, there is something I must ask of you. What is it? If you are indeed attacked, you need to defend your fiancé the entire way there. Do not let him use his energy. Like hell she will. When you get to the castle, I will be fighting one-on-one -on -one with the Demon Lord. If something should happen to me, then I need you to take over. She is not ready to fight him, and you need to be at full strength to finish him off. She'll be fine. Don't go doubting her strength just yet. I stared, listening and reaffirming the order. I couldn't lie, I was nervous. However, I was determined enough to see this through. I looked over at my fiancé with a confident smile. I got this, don't worry. Despite the worried look on his eyes, he nodded and held my hand, trusting me and my decision to agree with Diana's command. Diana rolled her shoulders and looked at the map draped over the war table between us all. Her gaze pierced into the parchment as the aura around her body pulsated in anger. I will fly ahead and meet the Demon Lord head on. No matter what happens, I will not allow that monster to live. The pure determination and anger in her voice practically sent a shiver down my spine. She was set on seeing this through to the end, and I was sure she was willing to even die if it meant taking the Demon Lord with her. Um. <clears throat> Shadow Hover cleared his throat. Might I suggest a simple solution to deal with the Demon Lord? Huh? What is it? Shadow turned and pointed to the map, his fingers pressing against the tower structure on the Demon Lord's castle. If my scouts are correct, then that tower directly hovers over the decaying sea. The what? Shadow turned to me with an enemy's grimace while a rabbit stepped towards me, hugging her staff to her body. The decaying sea. A cursed stretch of water that has plagued this side of the demon world for thousands of years. Many demons have fallen into that water and were never seen again. It's no ordinary sea. It's an eternal death wish. Just from the look in Rabbit's eyes, I could tell that the sea was bad news. Shadow nodded at Rabbit's description, adding more to the fray of the waters to the castle were pressed against. Any creature unfortunate enough to fall into that cursed stretch of water will be doomed to sink into an endless black void. They can never die due to the dark magic in the water, but they can never come back up. There's no saving them. Oh, that really sucks. I became fearful just thinking about going near it, however Diana crossed her arms and stared blankly at Shadow. So you wish for me to drag him up to the tower and toss him over? Precisely. It would make killing him much easier, wouldn't you think? Diana pressed her lips together, not agreeing or disagreeing with the suggestion given to her, however the conversation quickly turned back to the matter at hand. The remaining Incubi and the wives were asked to stay behind the army and guard the main base, where Rapid and Faye were stationed. They were needed as many eyes as possible in the back of the battle, so the four couples were perfect to keep things in check. As they agreed, the meeting ended and the mental preparation had begun. The idea of the upcoming battle scared me, sending waves of fear and worry up down my body in response to the thought. Meh. Big crowd for a dickhead old man, huh? <laughs> huh? I looked at the map in the war table, seeing multiple markers clutter in an open field in front of the Demon Lord's castle. According to Sorgent, there were hundreds of thousands of soldiers prepared to march, all ready to shed blood. I, however, looked to Sam with worry. I was frightened yet determined, worried yet pushing myself to be brave and step forward. Sensing this, Sam wrapped his hand around mine and gave it a hard squeeze. Hey, whatever happens, we'll do it together, alright? I listened to him speak before nodding, taking in a deep breath. Everything would be okay. We would be fine. I had to believe in myself and get us to the castle when the time was right. Like a beacon, our forces became the banner of hope and strength for the rebellion. At the sight of Diana, many soldiers bowed or stared in awe and inspiration. Many of it, maybe it was her presence, or maybe it was for what she stood for, but as Diana stood at the cliffside of the mountain, the air became full of energy and power. 
My fiance, Rabbit Faye, and I stood behind her as Dinah stood at the ledge of the cliffside, addressing the rebellion for their final batter. battle. <laughs> her voice echoed across the field, booming and reverberating through the air like thunder. Militis! Et hug liberati esturei tramcun tuis omnibus conversiris! Stovo biscum reducitic vos adspem! Nocte! Lavabimur arkem! Hostium sanguine! What is she saying? She's saying that everyone's here for the same thing, and we're gonna paint the walls with blood. Really? Well, not literally, but that should kick everyone's ass in here. I nodded as I stared at the back of Diana's head. A part of me felt a little intimidated and jealous of the power she had. She really could make armies bow to her and obey her every whim. At the same time, I knew that she was doing the right thing for this world. Ele dio dominati sun nostri, nostri stretch! Rabbit and Faye stepped forward and held their hands out towards the castle, focusing their energies and forcing the stone walls around it to crumble and dissolve down into the earth. Diana summoned her saber, letting it shine brilliantly as the purple taint over her skin began to twist and turn. Before my eyes, the taint on her back took shape, lifting off of Diana's skin and morphed into a set of demonic wings. I could only stare, jaw dropped, as Diana's body lifted off of the ground and began to fly over the legions, slowly gliding towards the castle. To war! To battle! At her final command, Diana's wing pulsated in the air, flapping gracefully as she swooped down and forward. She was charging and flying for the castle wall, saber, saber bared and ready to spill blood. As the armies below began to bellow and march forward, Rabbit took hold of my shoulder and turned me away from the castle to face her. Come, we must hurry. Understanding the need for urgency, I nodded and rushed forward with the rest of the incubi towards the slope down the mountainside. Everything is in order. Sergeant Diana's guard are at the front lines, while Shadow is with his legion to the west. We got a straight line to that bastard. We've done what we can to keep your way clear. We'll try to make sure the battle won't break through the path. I nodded, feeling the need to grip... Rush nip at my heels, pushing me forward. My fiancé seemed to agree, gripping my hands and walking at my pace alongside me. However, as we finally arrived at the forest line, Faye and Rabbit stopped looking back at us. Straight through here. The sound of the war will always be on your right, so do not get lost. You'll be fine, though. Just follow the tree line. In sync, my fiancé and I nodded in acknowledgement before turning to see the other brothers and their wives. So, oh, this is it. Remember your surroundings and protect each other. Be careful, alright? Make sure you stay safe. Princess, brother, we'll see you in the end. We have faith in you. You'll make it there, and we'll return to the human world soon. We'll finish this and rush in as soon as we can, alright? Make sure you kick some serious ass. Show that old goat what he gets for messing with you. We'll win this. We know we can. You can do this. We'll see you soon, okay? I smiled despite the nerves running through my body. I held into my fiance's hand and gave it a hard squeeze before receiving one back in kind. We'll finish this, then we'll go home. The group nodded before I slowly turned and looked into the tree line toward took a breath and rushed forward. Matching my speed, my left followed, weaving through the trees behind me to not lose sight of me. The journey was surprisingly swift. The sound of the war clashed behind us aside, outside of the tree line, causing me to cover my ears a bit from the volume, but I shook my head and pressed myself forward, not wanting to become distracted. The goal was to get to the castle. I had to focus. Before I could, however, I stopped at the sight of imps trickling from the direction of the castle in our direction. My rage began to ignite my core, causing the world around me to fill with a red, misty hue. I snarled as I lurched forward and let out a resounding battle cry that echoed through the air. Uh... Grrrr! <laughs> I could barely hear my incubus jump back at the sound, surprised to see me and hear me do what I did. Whoa! What the hell?! However, I didn't care at the moment. All I could focus were on the imps that I had successfully stopped intimidated with my howl. Get out of my way! I, I seriously can't scream right now. I jetted my hand forward, quickly run it, forming a large red orb and blasting it forward, letting it 
shoot through the trees and land on one of the imps exploding on impact. <laughs> the explosion forced many around me to be blasted away against trees or against the ground, disoriented. Disorientated. Disoriented. Yeah. I wasn't going to let them pass me by, though. Stepping forward and letting my instincts rush me forward at them. Gonna slaughter them. My body instantly reappeared in front of an imp, and I swung with this tie, slamming it into the imp's face and practically breaking his head from his neck. The pain in my knuckles flared, but I didn't care. Adrenaline rushed through me, and I quickly dissolved it. The remaining imps began to quake and step back in fear, most likely never anticipating a human decimating their mem- their number? Member? I wasn't so friendly and merciful, especially in my ridges. I lunged forward again and kicked an another imp, hearing the breaking of his ribs echo through the forest. Each time my eyes locked on an imp, I rushed to be in front of him before he could react and either severely locked them out or out of commission or killed them. Imps were almost easier than the damn dummy I practiced with. My incubus, despite probably being surprised at my carnage, followed as I continued forward, fighting through every imp that came in our way. I had lost count of how many crossed me, but I didn't care. All I cared about was getting to the castle. By the time we reached the end of the forest, there were a slew of dead and unconscious bodies behind me. I stood at the tree line, panting and feeling waves of angry heat run through my veins. I panted for air, slowly focusing on calming down as my energy quickly depleted from its adrenaline filled high. That was all I could do before my energy was expended and a wave of exhaustion rolled through my body. I began to fall forward, exhausted. My fiance, however, quickly rushed forward and caught me in his arms. Oh shit! Are you okay? Huh? I looked to see Sam staring down at me with a deeply concerned gaze. We were safe for the moment, so I merely smiled up at him with a nod. I'm fine. I promise to protect you. Like you protect me. Sam pressed his lips together and shook his head, glaring down at me before wrapping his arms fully around me and hugging me to him. You fucking doofus. Aww. I hugged him back feeling relief that we had finally arrived at the castle and were about to rush inside. As we slowly pulled away, Sam lifted me up and helped me to my feet. You gonna be okay? I nodded, shaking off the exhaustion from my mind. I was ready to end this. I looked up at the castle gates and felt a rush of determination run through me. Run through me. Let's go finish this. With that, Sam and I raced forward. The final battle had begun. At the gates, however, stood a figure that seemed to pose almost pridefully in our path. Sam and I step stopped our run and took in what was standing in our way. For some reason, he seemed... familiar. Who? <laughs> Finally, you showed up. Malix? I thought you were dead! That voice. My mind finally clicked, linking the voice to a memory I wish I'd forgotten. However, it couldn't have been. N no way! Oh my god! Sam began to growl, almost animalistically, as a figure stepped out of the shadow of the gate. His face was covered by a terrifying devil mask. But I recognized him despite the fact. His white hair and his red skin. There was no way it could have been. <laughs> Missed me, bitch? Well, seeing as it's like about 50 some minutes and I don't know how long this is gonna take, I think I'm gonna end it right here. But oh my god. I think he's pretty scarred underneath that mask because of what Sam did to him. Or maybe he got revived right back. I don't know! But stuff happening. Let me save it here. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I think we will conclude with part 5 of this. Sounds like it's gonna be that way. Um, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!